What is going on guys, welcome back. In this video today, we're going to learn how to implement a simple substitution cipher in Python. So let us get right into it. All right, so we're going to implement a simple substitution cipher in Python today. Now, a substitution cipher is not really something that you would be using nowadays in cryptography or cybersecurity. You would not use it to encrypt your private uh, messages or sensitive information. It's more of a thing that you implement to practice programming and to understand basic concepts of cryptography, similar to a Caesar cipher or a basic uh, transposition cipher. So what's the basic idea behind a substitution cipher? The idea is that you have an alphabet containing all the symbols and characters that you're allowed to use to craft a message, something like A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and so on. Also A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and so on in uppercase, and then also uh, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on, and maybe white spaces and punctuation symbols. So white space, comma, uh, dot, then maybe brackets and so on, whatever. Now, this is now the alphabet. This is what we're allowed to use all the characters, all the symbols that we have. What a substitution cipher now does is it replaces every single character with another character from the alphabet. Now, sometimes it can even be the same character. But the idea is that you assign to each character, a character of the alphabet. And you do that randomly, usually. So a could be nine, b could be u, c could be an uppercase j, d could be a colon. Uh, e could be a comma, F could be F, this is also possible, G could be one, and so on and so forth. That's the idea behind a substitution cipher. And the idea is now when I want to write something like, hello, what I do is I look up the assignment. So if I have capital H is mapped onto lowercase m, I would say m. If E is mapped to comma, I would use a comma. If L is mapped to let's say, uh, an opening square bracket, I would use two opening square brackets here. If always mapped to five, I would use five and so on. Um, so that's the basic idea behind a substitution cipher. And of course, to reverse the process, I would do the reverse um, mapping. So I would look okay, M in the key is mapped to H. So it's H E L L O and so on. That's the basic idea. Now a Caesar cipher to compare it here, I also have a video on this channel where I show you how to implement a Caesar encryption in Python. Uh, a Caesar cipher also does a sort of substitution, but it does the substitution by shifting the alphabet. So if we shift it to the left, for example, it would be something like this C D E F G if you shift it by two characters to the left, A would be C, B would be D and so on. That's a Caesar cipher. Now a substitution cipher does a similar thing, but not by shifting the alphabet, but by just randomly assigning the individual characters of the alphabet. So this is what we're going to implement here today. For this, we're going to import two Python packages, core Python packages, random and string. String is only used to craft the alphabet, because the alphabet is going to be alphabet is going to be equal to the list of string dot ASCII lowercase plus string dot ASCII uppercase plus string dot punctuation plus string dot digits plus string dot white space. So this is just a collection of all the characters that we want to be able to use here. If I print this, you will see we have A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Uh, also in uppercase, we have the punctuation symbols, we have uh, the digits and we have white spaces here and also tabs and line breaks and so on. So this is our alphabet here. Uh, or actually, I don't want to include all the white spaces. Let's just go with the character white space. I don't want to have uh, line breaks in my in my translated messages. But of course, you can include them if you want to. So this is now the alphabet. When we go to the end, you will see we have a white space, but nothing else. So that's the alphabet. And now we want to do the substitution, the substitution is going to happen with a key, the key is basically the mapping. So the alphabet, but uh, in a different order. Uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to define a method or a function generate key. And this is going to take the alphabet as a parameter. And what we're going to do here is we're going to say the shuffled alphabet is going to be equal to a copy of the alphabet that we already have, like this. And then we're going to do a random dot shuffle on the shuffled alphabet. So on the copy of the alphabet. And this is going to be our key. So 
we can print the result of generate key applied onto alphabet. And you can see when I run this, I get different combinations here, different permutations of the alphabet. Now you can also calculate how many different keys you can generate here to somehow evaluate at least uh, to some degree the security or the power of the substitution, even though there are other weaknesses, not just the amount of permutations. Uh, you can do that by importing from iter tools, which is also core Python import permutations. Uh, or actually, we don't need to do that. Uh, it's even simpler than that, you can just calculate it mathematically, because you have n different uh, characters or symbols, and you just have to go n factorial to figure out the amount of permutations. So n factorial is the amount of permutations that you have for n distinct characters. And in our case, we can just go ahead and import math, and we can print um, math dot factorial, and the length of the alphabet is important here. And this is the amount of combinations or permutations in this case that we have. These are the, the possible keys. This is the number of possible keys that we can end up with here, which is a huge number. But there are, as I said, other uh, problems with this type of cipher. So that is our generate key function, very simple. Now we need two other functions, which are the encrypt function and the decrypt function. Now the encrypt function will take a text to encrypt, it will take the key to do the encryption with and it will take the alphabet uh, to have yeah, the basic alphabet here as well. And what this function is going to do is it's going to just replace the individual characters in the text with the respective characters from the key. So we're going to say here, uh, encrypted is going to be equal to a list comprehension where we say the key from the key list, we want to get the position that we also have in the alphabet. So we look up the index of a character in the original alphabet and at the same index, um, we want to get the character from the key. So from the shuffled alphabet, for every character in text. So we go to the alphabet, we look up the letter C, the letter C is at position three, so at index two. And then we look up what is the character at index two in the key. And this is the one we take here. This is how we do the replacement or the encryption. And at the end, we would just return all of this joined together um, by empty strings. So just turning it into a string from a list. Um, and we do that from encrypted. Now to implement the decrypt function, we do the same thing, but we do it the other way around. So we say decrypt takes also text key alphabet. But this time we look up in the alphabet, the index of uh, that, that it has in the key. And we call this decrypt, decrypted, decrypted. And that is basically all we need to do, we generate a key, let's say, generated key is equal to generate key from the alphabet. Then we can also print this key. And then what we want to do is we want to encrypt the message. Let's say my message is Hello World. Subscribe to Neural9 on YouTube. There you go. And what we can then do is we can say encrypted message is going to be equal to encrypt, we pass the message, we pass the key, and we pass the alphabet, then we can print the encrypted message, then we can decrypt the message. So decrypted message is equal to decrypt message, or actually not message, but encrypted message generated key. So it's symmetric, we use the same key for encryption as for decryption. We also pass the alphabet and then we can print the final result, decrypted message. And that is basically it. If I run this now, you can see I get the key here, I get this as an encrypted message. And then I get Hello World, subscribe to Neural9 on YouTube as my decrypted message again. So my original message is decrypted again. Um, and this is the basic idea of a substitution cipher. So what you would do is you would generate a key, you would exchange it in a secure way with your person that you want to be communicating with in theory. Uh, so they have the same key, you run your text through the encrypt uh, encrypted message here or encrypted function here, um, encrypt function here, and they use the same key 
to take your encrypted message and decrypt it with the decrypt function here. So all you have to do is you have to have the same alphabet and key, and then you can just exchange messages. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting the like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.